God bless you, first of all. And in Hebrew, Yahweh, Abba, Yahweh, Raka, Ahaya, Hallelujah. I am Apostle Jeremiah Cummins. I am really excited about what the Lord has done and what the Lord is doing uh, at Shabbat Global Ministry. First of all, I want to welcome D'Angelo to our family. Uh, he's, I'm training him to, to, to praise and worship. He's never praised and worshiped before. Um, but I want to say to Sister Renee, um, he's doing a great job. Sister Renee is his mother down in Mississippi, down in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, I saw that Ambassador Joe Thomas and Deacon Steve Thomas were on earlier as I did a little short commercial. I'm excited about everything, you know, because one of the things, uh, it's so much. I, on Sunday, I hit on some things that some people may not agree with. Uh, I, I talked about how I was in Jerusalem in 1991, and uh, it was my first time in Jerusalem. And, uh, and so I got a chance to sit with Hebrew scholars. And, uh, and they told me that my name in Hebrew, Jeremiah, was Yimiyah. He said, but in the Hebrew language, he said, you know, males and females speak Hebrew, but they talk to each other differently. And, uh, and let me explain that. Like, my name is uh, Yimiyah. Uh, in Hebrew, but a woman wouldn't call me Yemiya in Hebrew. My Hebrew name, and when a woman says it is Yemiyahu, uh, it explains a lot to me about scripture and about our preaching today. Our churches are 90, 95% women. Uh, and the Lord was sharing with me because most of our preaching is geared towards, you know, the feminine, the feminine, now, not the masculine, um, I know one man, um, Pastor John Cherry, who passed away up in uh, Maryland, he had more men than he had women. And I'm going to get to that um, uh, because he preached a masculine message. And so I want to be able to preach a message that would draw men and women, not just a bunch of women, but men and women. So I pray that God will give me uh, the Hebrew thought. Uh, when I say Yahweh, that is I am God, you know, which... Moses said, well, who should I say send me? When I go back to Pharaoh, he said, tell him, Yahweh, I am have sent thee. And so I want to talk about taking back the glory because the glory, kavod in Hebrew, is something that we have lost. And that was, and that's exactly what God intended for us to walk in. He intended for us not only to walk in his glory, which is victory and prosperity, you know, and godliness, um, but he, 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 he chose us to be his glory. Amen. And, and, and the only way that you're going to be his glory, you got to understand that he called you his glory. Amen. As a matter of fact, he says, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, the presence of God. That's what glory, kavod in Hebrew. It means in his presence. Amen. Uh, I remember one scripture in the book of Psalms that says, in his presence is fullness of joy, not sadness, not defeat, amen, but joy, amen. We should be walking around in joy. We should be excited about the presence of God on us and that he chose us for his glory, amen. When God formed man from the dust of the ground in Genesis chapter number two and verse number seven, when God, and you read it, it's in the Bible, you know you ain't throw that page out. In Genesis 2 and verse number 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into man the breath of life. That was his glory. That was kavod. That was his spirit. And man became a speaking spirit or living soul, as King James calls it. But you and I are speaking spirits, and it's something when you know that God dwells in you, his breath is in you, his spirit is in you, you walk in confidence, amen. You have confident expectations then, amen. And so we want to talk about this glory, amen. Let's look at it. Now, the devil did not know. I'm going to say that again. The devil did not know that God would come to dwell in man. He didn't know that. So when Jesus comes along and he was Emmanuel, God with us, God was present in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. And so when God comes to dwell within you, 
God is present in Joe Thomas. God is present in Zelma Bowen. God is present. And when God is present, you know what? You intimidate the devil. People, people don't like you for some reason. People want to stay away from you. And I, look, amen. Amen. When I meet a man or a woman with the presence of God, I, I detect the presence of God in their life. I want to be close to him. Amen. I want some of that godliness to rub off on me. I want to, amen. I want to walk in his presence. But look, I want to go back to Numbers 14 and verse number 21, the will of God. Amen. Even after Adam had fallen away from God, even after, even after Adam had died spiritually, God made a promise in Numbers 14 and verse number 21. He says, and it's in the Bible, look at it, write it down. He said, but, but, even though Adam fell, even though Satan became the God of this world, but he says in Numbers 14 and verse number 21, he said, but as truly as I live, God is decreeing this. He said, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord or the presence of God. Amen. Now, let me, let me, let me, let me make this clear. You are the first earth that, amen, that will be filled with this glory. Your flesh is dirt. Your bones are rock, your blood is water, which makes up the elements of the earth. Amen. Amen. There's a little fire in there too, you know, because you you heat it up to 98 point something uh, degrees. Amen. So um, you are the glory that God wants to fill first. He wants to fill you with his presence. In the book of Isaiah, and that's why none of the that's why Daniel couldn't be eaten by the lion. Daniel represented the glory of God. That's why the Hebrew boys could not burn in the fiery furnace because they represented the glory of God. Amen. And when you represent the glory of God, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You need to walk around and you need to say to yourself maybe 40 or 50 times until you get it in your mind that you need to say, I am the glory of God. Remember, we, we were doing this I am uh, teaching not too long ago. And we said, we are the offspring of God. Amen. We are the heirs of God. And so when you confess that over and over and over again, it begins to, you begin to take on the characteristics of what you say. Because death and life, according to Proverbs 18 and 21, death and life is in the power of your tongue. Amen. So we speak life. And the word of God is life. Amen. So we only say what God says and we only confirm, we only, we only confirm what God says with our own mouth and with our own mind and we become what we say. Amen. Amen. I believe it's in Matthew 12, 37. He said, you are justified by the words of your mouth and you are condemned by the words of your mouth. Justification comes when you can quote and recite the word of God. You become, amen, what you say. My Lord, my Lord. And it's so simple. But the devil did not know that when Adam fell, God had a second Adam who would come and bring back the glory. When you're in Christ, amen. When you receive Christ, amen. When you, when you say, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, amen. I believe that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Amen. When you believe in him, you begin to take on the characteristics and the attributes of him. And then I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. John 17 and 22. St. John 17 and verse number 22. Jesus talks about the glory. In John 17 and verse number 22, he says, and the glory, there it is. He says, and the glory which you have given to me I have given to them that they may be one, even as we are one. In other words, he said, I'm giving them the glory, the kabod, the attributes. I'm giving them the characteristics. I'm giving them the presence of God. Amen. What you gave me, I'm giving it to them. Amen. Look, everything that God gave to Christ, Christ came to pass it on to you. Amen. So that you may walk in it, walking in his glory. Amen. So remember now, Numbers 14 and verse number 21, he says, but as truly as I live, 
all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. And you say, well, why all this chaos is going on in the world? Why all of this stuff is going on in the world? Because the world don't know the truth. Amen. The word don't know the, the world don't know the word. Amen. The word don't know the purpose. The word don't know the aim of God. And it is our job to be able to share with the whole world. This is why he tells us to go into all the world and teach all nations. Amen. We got to tell it. Amen. Until they hear it and begin to walk in it. Now, remember now, Numbers 14 and verse number 21. This is a scripture that I learned back around 1987. It was really given to me back then. And, uh, and then I came to Chicago and was staying at um, the Hyatt Hotel on, um, on it, it was called the Hyatt Hotel on Lakeshore Drive. Went downstairs and there was a lady down there preaching on a Sunday morning and she used Numbers 14 and 21. She used, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. That's a promise. God said, it's going to be, it's going to be filled with, the, with my presence. Amen. Now, you are the presence of God. Look, in, uh, he created man and one man for his glory. In the book of Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 43, and verse number 7. Amen. Look at it. It's there. Isaiah 43 and verse number 7. He said, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory. He said, I, he said, look, I created you for my glory. Then he says, whom I have formed. He formed you for his glory, even whom I have made. Amen. The word in Hebrew, kavod, is the manifestation of the presence of God in human form. And this is what the devil don't want you to know. This is what the devil don't want you to say. That you are the glory of God because he created you for his glory. You can back it up with the word of God. It says in Isaiah 43 and verse number 7, he said, Even everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory. He said, I created you for my glory, for my presence, for the manifestation of God's presence in human form. So when people see you, beloved, they should see God in human form in you. The Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. And you'll get to the point that you'll start saying things and start seeing it. Yes, sir. That, I mean, you like God. I mean, you're made in the image and likeness of God. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Well, if I'm the image and likeness of God, amen, I'm going to say I am out of debt. All my bills are paid. Amen. I, amen. I'm going, I got the victory over the devil. The devil is ashes under my feet. I'm only saying what God said. I, I got to say what he said because I'm made in his image and I'm made in his likeness. And I'm the glory of God according to the word. Not according to me. And this is something that the church as a whole does not teach. The church is already, the, the church want to tell you that you're just a poor sinner saved by grace when the Bible tells you that he died for your sin. Amen. That you are complete in him who is the head of, of, of principalities and power. Amen. You are complete in him. And then how are you going to be just a poor sinner? Amen. When the riches of his glory has been, has been poured into your life. I'm not going to claim that. Like I'm not going to claim I'm sick. I'm not going to claim that what the doctor say. The doctor say I got something. I say I ain't got nothing. You got that. Amen. I'm not going to claim it. I'm going to claim the word. I'm going to claim the victory that God has given me. We always win, the Bible says, in Christ. That means we're going to always have opposition. We're going to always have people that don't like us. But we got the victory anyway. And I'm going to tell you how, the, how God gets rid of the devil. You know how God, that's why I say don't worry about him trying to attack you. That's how he gets rid of it. Because no weapon formed against you will prosper. He gets rid of you. Uh, let me give you an example of this. I remember growing up in Washington, D.C. And we'd be out at night. And at night, we see all of these bugs flying around the light. 
All of these bugs flying around, they attack the light. Amen. They attack the light. They're flying around the light, right? Uh, you, you've seen this. All these bugs are gathering around these lights, all right? In the morning when we come out, all the bugs are dead. All the bugs don't burn, and they attack the light. Well, you are the light of the world, beloved. So when you come under attack, amen, they're going to fall dead. They're going to they gonna leave you alone, in other words. I'm not saying physically death, but they're going to leave you alone. Just like the light bulb in the, in, on the street that bugs attack at night, well, you are the light of the world. And when you, when you come under attack, the people that come against you, they're going to fall away. They got to leave you alone. Because you're too hot to try. My God, my God. I'm just telling you, this is what we teach. We teach words of faith. Amen and amen. So we saw in Numbers 14 and 21. We saw, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of God. Amen. Then we saw that he created us for his glory in Isaiah now, you got to get this because once you understand this, you're going to walk different, talk different, act different, and things are going to be manifested in your life differently from this night on. Isaiah 43, verse 7, everyone who is called by my name, amen, he said, whom I have created for my glory. He tells you, first he promised us that the whole earth is going to be filled with the glory. Then he says, everyone who is called by my name, I have created him for my glory. He said, even I have made him. And that word glory means, the man is the word kavod in Hebrew and Aramaic. That word glory means, I created you to manifest my presence in your human form. Amen and amen. Now, one word that I learned in the 80s is Shekinah glory. I wonder if y'all heard that word before. Shekinah. Somebody said, see, that's a Hebrew word. That ain't English. Shekinah glory. Amen. That's real glory. That's powerful glory. Somebody say Shekinah. Shekinah glory. Amen. Well, look at it in, in the book of uh, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter number 7 and verse number 1. Let me show you the power of this glory, this Shekinah glory. Amen. He said, when Solomon had finished praying, listen to this. Fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the Shekinah glory and brilliance of the Lord filled the house or filled the temple. Amen. So the presence of God is called the Shekinah glory, which is the manifestation of the presence of God. And that's what God wants to manifest in you. He wants to, oh yeah, the devil mad because I'm teaching this stuff because, because he don't want it to be taught. Amen. He don't want you to know that you are the glory of God. Amen. If you tell somebody, somebody say, well, who are you? Say, I'm the glory of God. So I had, when I first came here and I was meeting with men and, and, uh, and, uh, and I said, when somebody asks you, you know, who are you? Tell them that you are men of integrity. Amen. Because God is a God of integrity. Amen. And if we're going to be man, in, in the image of God, I am a man of integrity. They were walking around saying, I'm a man of integrity. That's powerful. Amen. So you are, amen, the glory of God. And, and God, <laughs> he created you for his glory, for his presence. Amen. So Shekinah glory, we find that in the Amplified Version of the Bible, in 2 Chronicles Chapter number seven and verse number one, it says, um, when Solomon had finished praying, fire came down from heaven, amen, and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the Shekinah glory and brilliance of the Lord fill the house, fill the temple. And I'm not, listen. He got, look, the, the Shekinah glory of God filled the house when he prayed. Amen. When you pray, something is supposed to happen. And you must have the spirit of expectancy knowing that something is supposed to happen. Amen. You ain't got to worry about it. You pray with the, with the spirit of faith. The Bible says have faith in God, which means have the God kind of faith. Amen. So it's in the Bible. 
If you go all the way over to uh, Galatians chapter number 2 and verse number 20, Paul writes, it is no longer I that live. See that? It's no longer when you're born again, when Christ becomes Lord of your life and the glory of God comes into dwell within you by his spirit. Paul writes in Galatians chapter number two and verse number 20. He said, it is no longer I that live, but it is Christ who lives in me. It's in the Bible, beloved. Amen and amen. Amen. He didn't always live in us, but he lives in us now. His presence is in us now. He said, Galatians 2.20. It's no longer I that live. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but it is Christ who lives in me and the life that I now live. I live it by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. There was an exchange that happened. He gave himself for me. He pulled me away and put himself in. And now I'm not living by Jeremiah Cummings' faith. I'm living by his faith. His faith has brought me to this point. His faith will carry me on to the next level because, I'm, because I have his faith in me. I have him in me. Therefore, I have the glory of God in me. That's why the Hebrew boys couldn't burn in the fiery furnace because they had the glory of God was on them and angels accompany us. Amen. And wherever we go, doors open for us. Wherever we go, opportunity open for us. Wherever we go, because of the glory of God that is on your life. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Look, when the glory of God, now I, I, what I'm getting ready to share with you now, I experienced it in Louisiana one year. I think it was around 2010. I was in Louisiana, and the glory of God fell in that church as I was preaching. And my words, my words would come out right because of the presence of God. It's in the Bible, just like this. In 2 Chronicles, amen. And it'll happen to you. You'll start speaking in tongue. You'll start saying words like, Yaqwa, Abba, Ya, Baraka, Aha, Ya. I mean, you'll start, you'll just start speaking because of the glory. I'm coming back from Canada, you know, in December. Jalisha Cummings, my daughter, is on in Washington, D.C. God bless you, my daughter. Amen. So I'm coming back from Washington, D.C., I'm mean, no, got me talking about Washington, D.C. I'm coming back from Toronto, Canada after ministry in Toronto, Canada in December. My wife couldn't travel with me and the glory fell. And I started saying, Yahwa, Abba, Yahwa, Now it's Ayaha. And I mean, Rada. I started saying words. And God said, I gave you these words because you're going to need them for the next level. Amen. Amen. We're on our way to New York City. On Broadway on Monday. We'll be here Sunday, but we're on our way to New York City because God wants to do something on another level now. Amen. So listen, listen. I exp now I'm telling you something that I experienced. Okay? I'm trying to preach, and all of a sudden the Shekinah glory takes over. Yes, sir. I felt it. I knew it. I experienced it. And it's in the Bible. In 2 Chronicles, chapter number 5, and verse number 14, it said, The priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. So they couldn't even minister. I've been there. I couldn't even minister. I'm telling you, I thought they were going to throw me out of there, because, I mean, I couldn't minister. The glory fell on me, you know. And, you know, I, thought, I said, well, they're not going to give me too much of an offering now, you know. It blew my mind when they handed me a check. I mean, I, I said, whoa, I thought I had messed up. But the glory was there. The glory of God was there. And it was just like that in 2 Chronicles chapter number 5 and verse number 14. The priest could not minister. You get so full of the glory of God, you be trying to minister, you can't even minister. Words start coming out that you don't even you say, how did this happen, you know? But Christ came 
to return that glory, that Shekinah glory, and give it to those who will submit to God and be born of water and spirit. He says it in John 17. And that's why the Hebrew boys couldn't, they couldn't burn the glory. Amen. They, when Nebuchadnezzar looked in, he said, then now we throw three. He said, I three, he said, I see four. He said, I see the glory of God up in there. Amen. Look at, look. <laughs> boy, I am excited. Y'all ought to know it. Amen. Christ came to return that Shekinah glory and give it to those who will submit to God and be born of water and the spirit. In John 17, look at it. John chapter number 17 and verse number 22. God wants you to walk in that glory. God wants you to understand that he came when you are born again, when his spirit comes to dwell within you. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation and old things pass away and behold, all things become new. What happens when you're born again, really born again? Amen. The glory comes in. The manifestation of God's presence come in. Favor comes with that. People will start doing things for you, opening doors for you, giving you money. You won't even be able to explain it. Amen. Things are happening for us. I can't even explain it. If I try to tell you how it happened, I can't. Because the way that you think it's going to happen, it, ain't, it may not even come close to what you're thinking. Because he does exceeding abundantly above all that we can ever ask, think, or imagine, or dream of. So you may think it's going to come from this hand, it's going to come from that hand, and God will show you that he got it. And it comes in a way, your blessing, I'm going to say it tonight, your blessing is coming in an unexpected way. It's coming in a way that you can't even see it. Like the Bible said, I have not seen it. Ear has not heard it. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God has in store for them that love him. The way your blessing is coming, beloved, you can't put your finger on it. I mean, it just comes out. I can't even explain the things that are happening in my life today. I can't explain what God is doing in our ministry today. Not just locally, globally. I can't even explain it. My, my wife got a vision from God a few years ago, and she woke up and she heard cyber church. Cyber church. And so we went on Blog Talk Radio. Blog Talk Radio went through the roof. We had to get a special satellite dish with huge net. The local cable couldn't hold up the people that was calling in. We kept getting static. Then we started Shabbat Radio Network. Amen. All over the world now. All the way to Dubai. Amen. You know, and now it's now it's taking off to a whole nother level because we we got stuff happening. My new book is coming out this year called The Last Note Standing. Amen. We're working on a play. Amen. That's why we're going to New York. We're going to Broadway on Monday. We got a meeting. Doors are opening. Can't no devil stop this. And that's what I read that today. I'm hold on for a minute. This is what I read today in 1 Peter chapter number 3, verse number 13. And I'm going to stop there. First, the Message Bible. Somebody say the Message Bible. In 1 Peter chapter number 3, it says, If with heart and soul you're doing good, meaning you're doing the will of God. He said, Do you think you can be stopped? Boy, when I read that, he said, Do you think you can be stopped? I mean, you got the glory of God on your life. Do you think you can be stopped from what God is getting ready to do in your life? You can't be stopped. And you ain't got, look, people don't have to like you. They don't have to speak nicely about you. I mean, they can lie on you. They can mistreat you. It don't matter. The Bible says, he said, if, if with heart and soul, you're doing good. That means you're doing the good work of God, the will of God. Amen. He said, do you think you can be stopped? Look what he said. He said, even if you suffer for it, he said, you're still better off. Don't give the opposition a second thought. He said, don't even, now read that in 1 Peter chapter number 3, verse number 13 through 18. Read it. He said, you can't even be stopped. You know why? Because of Shekinah glory. Somebody say Shekinah glory. If I was to say it in Hebrew, I'd say Shekinah Kabod. 
Amen. Shekinah Shabbat. That's Shekinah glory. And we saw that over in 2 Chronicles. Now, the glory, Christ came to return that Shekinah glory and give it to those who will submit to God, sold out for Christ. Amen. First, I'm mean, in St. John, chapter number 17 and verse number 22. He said, I have given them the glory. Oh, my God. John chapter 17, verse number 22. I don't care if you want to do Amplified or King James. He said, I have given them the glory and the honor which you have given me. He said, God, he said, Father, I'm giving them what you gave me. He said, everything that you gave me, I'm giving it to them. You got to receive it. Amen. He said, I have given them the glory and the honor which you've given me, that they may be one just as we are one. Now watch the oneness in verse 23. In verse 23, John 17, 23. He said, I in them. He said, I in them. And you in me. That they may be made perfect and complete into one. So he came to make us one, not divided, not division, not a denomination. He came to make us one, him and the Father and us are one. Good God Almighty. He says it, you know. And so, and so how do I get this glory? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. I got to hurry to a close. And when, you, and when you get the glory of God, the manifestation of God in your life, you have great peace because you love the Lord. You love the Word. Amen. And it says that. I'm, I'm just going to jump over here real quick. And Psalm, go to the book of Psalms, 119, verse number 165, King James. He says, great peace. That's godly peace. Have they which love thy word. Amen. You love the word. Amen. I love the word. I, I love teaching the word. Your, your Bible might say law, but law in Hebrew is word. Amen. He said, great peace. I have great peace. Amen. I have the peace. What, what is great peace, beloved? It's the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. While everybody else is going crazy over something, you got peace. Everybody else worried about something. You got peace. He said, great peace have they that love that law. Then he said, and nothing shall offend them. We don't get offended. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, um, we don't get offended to the point where it stops us from going forward. Or oh, people will say stuff that will offend you. Uh, that's just the way people are. Now, you be wondering, well, why do they talk to me like that? Because they're not where you are. They're not on your level. You don't talk to them like that, but they talk to you like that. And let me tell you why. Don't get upset. They're not on your level. You got to raise them up. Amen. You got to say things like, well, if I offended you, please forgive me. And that's hard to say when you've been, when, when, when you, when somebody says something that you don't like. Amen. But if I offended you, forgive me. Ain't nothing wrong with saying forgive me. Amen. Don't be talking about you're going to hit them in the mouth. Forget that. Amen. Look, great peace. Why do I have this great peace? Because of the glory, the Shekinah glory, the Shekinah Kavad, the glory of God that Christ came to give us. As he said, he said, I have given them the glory. God says in Numbers 14 and 21, but as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Then he says in Isaiah 43 and verse number 7, he said, even everyone who is called by my name, I have created him or her for my glory. I have formed him. Yes, I have made them for my glory, for the manifestation of my presence. That's why God made you. He made you to reveal him in the earth. And what is a real Christian? A real Christian is one who reveals Jesus. They don't just talk Jesus. They Come on. They reveal Christ in the earth. Amen. When you see them, you see the Lord. Amen and amen. When you see them, when you hear them, you hear a word from God. Amen. That unlocks your consciousness. That takes you to another level. And God wants you to have great peace. Great peace. Godly peace. As it is written in Psalms 
119 and 165. He said, great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Amen. So how do I get to this level? Amen. Everything is by the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. The word puts you there. It says it and it tells us very clearly. I can go on and on. My wife said I got five minutes. Let me share 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 18. Listen to this, an amplified version of your Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. Verse number 18, we're talking about the glory. Tell somebody we're talking about the glory. Amen. The manifestation of the presence of God in human form. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Amen. He, Jesus said, I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one in John 17 and 23. So how do I get the glory? Amen. You don't play. You, you got to get in the word. Because the word is the glorious gospel of Christ. Amen and amen. He says in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 18. Let me read it from the Amplified Version. It says, and we all with unveiled face continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. So your Bible becomes your mirror. Amen. Amen. King James says glass. But it's talking, that's what a mirror is. The, new, the, um, the amplified version says, And we all, with unveiled face, continually seeing as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are progressively being transformed into his image. Being transformed into the image of God is a transformation progressively. It's a progressiveness. You don't get it when you come to the church. You got to stay with the word. Amen. You can't just read the Bible once a week or twice a week or three times a week. You can't just study every now and then. Come on. Amen. The Bible said, give us this day our daily bread. It ain't talking about food. It's talking about the word. Amen. Meditation brings about the manifestation of the glory of God. Medi I'm going to say it again. I didn't mean to say it like that. But meditation brings about the manifestation. You ought to, you ought, you ought to love a word. Amen. I, I remember well, I remember before I started preaching, this old preacher used to quote scripture to me all the time, right? And he said, brother, do you think you will ever quote scripture like I do? And he was bad, man. I mean, he could really quote some scripture, man. He gave you the scripture verse and everything, all right? And I said, I don't think so, brother. I don't think I'll be able to quit, well, quote the word like that, you know, like you're doing. You know, I didn't know nothing about quoting the Bible, you know. And he said, one day, he said, you'll do it better than me. And I said, what? And he's gone on to be with the Lord now. And I think he'll be proud of me today. Yeah, man, the way that I'm teaching and, and the fire that comes from my, my words and, and people that are being helped and loved. You know, by us, we're loved by so many people all over the world, you know, and uh, even here in Illinois, we're loved by a lot of people. And uh, they love the teaching. And uh, they come from Mississippi. They come from Dallas. Uh, we got apostle. We got um, a bishop. Uh, well, prophet, Daryl Johnson and, and uh, Providence Andrea Johnson are coming to us on May the 19th, coming under covenant with Shabbat Global Ministries. And we'll be covering them. We're already covering them. And they're already um, like family to us. I married them 30 years ago, you know, but you are progressively, I want you to get this beloved. It don't happen overnight. You are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory, even more glory. That's in second Corinthians chapter number three, verse number 18 in the Amplified Version. And we all, with unveiled face, continually seeing as in a mirror. Your Bible becomes your mirror. Amen. When you look into the Word of God, the Word of God is looking at you at the same time. Amen. You're being transformed progressively. Amen. You get out of the Word, you'll get out of the will. Amen and amen. But if you stay in the Word, quote the Word, 
prayed the 23rd Psalm, quote Psalms 91, 22 promises in Psalms 91, claim them as I claim Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper because I know if I keep teaching like this, oh man, the devil going to get mad talking about the glory, the kavod, the shekinah glory of God. Man, he don't want you to know about no shekinah glory. Where, where, where the glory and the presence of God, you walk in his glory, you say things and they start, angels take that thing that you say, and start going to get the thing that you desire, and bring it back to you, my God, amen. He said, you are progressively, listen to me, beloved, you are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory even to another degree of glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. The Christ, the anointed one. Amen and amen. I'm going to talk about taking back the glory. Because in the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel, it says that the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. That's all about the glory, beloved. He said the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and forever. When you start talking about taking the kingdom, you're talking about taking back the glory. Taking back the glory of God. Amen. Taking about the pre taking back the presence of God. Amen. Amen. And so that's what happened with Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel took the glory of God. And when he came up out of the lion's den, the king said, he said, he said, all of my kingdom shall serve the God of Daniel. For he is the living God. Amen. Daniel was a slave in a kingdom that he became the governor in. Joseph was in prison and had been put in a pit, but he became the prince of Egypt. Amen. Second in command of Pharaoh. This is what happens when you're walking in the glory of God. Amen and amen. And uh, I'm telling you, beloved, I wish we'd get a hold of this and become one and pool our resources and build something so that the world will know that we have made an impact on the world. God put you in this world to have an impact on people and have an impact on society. Amen. That's why you're here. God put you on this planet that you may have victory, walk in victory, and come to know him in his fullness and walk in his fullness. Amen. Are y'all all right? And he come to give you Shekinah glory. Amen and amen. Shekinah glory. Amen. Ain't nothing like Shekinah glory. Amen. Amen. I love all of you. Amen. I tell you what. Go to ShabbatRadio1.com. Amen. I mean, this kind of teaching, man, you know, you need to sow into this kind of teaching. This word here, you need to sow into this kind of teaching. Amen and amen. And, and, and support what we're doing. Get behind it. Amen. And watch the manifestation of the glory and the presence of God open doors for you. We're going to pray it. We're going to say it. And it's going to happen. Amen. And amen. I'm Apostle Jeremiah Cummins. Amen. And amen. We're coming to New York next Monday. We're going to hit Broadway. Amen. We're going to go to New Jersey. We're going to talk about Broadway in New Jersey. Amen. And amen. And it's going to be wonderful. Amen. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. We got folks. We got angels on assignment. We got folks praying for us already. We know what's getting ready to happen. Amen. The devil fears what's getting ready to happen. Amen. But I'm glad that he's, he's afraid of us. Amen. He should be. He don't try to knock us down so many times. My wife has recovered. Amen. She is feeling 100% better now. Amen. We had this, uh, this health checkup in a health food uh, store here where they put your hands on a computer and they can tell everything that's wrong with your body. Amen. I mean, and I want to invite some of y'all to try this because this stuff works. Amen. And amen. But we love you, my daughter, Delicia Cummings, and all of you, uh, uh, Ambassador Zelma born up in Canada, and, and all down in Mississippi, Ambassador Joe Thomas and Deacon Steve Thomas, and uh, down in uh, Grenada, Mississippi. June 6th, 7th, and 8th, we're going to be in Grenada, Mississippi. 6th, 7th, and 8th in Grenada with our family there, with our members there, and also South Haven, uh, the Madisons, uh, we're, we're going to be there. They're going to be there. Amen. Matter of fact, hmm? and Jackson will be there. And Jackson, Mississippi will be yes. there. Amen. And so, look, we're having an impact. And that's why the devil mad, because we're having an impact. Amen. And um, 
He can stay mad. He just mad because he lost what he thought he had. Amen. And um, I thank God for all of you. Uh, this Sunday, I'm going to be picking up on this. Um, taking back the glory. I'm going to be picking up on this this Sunday, 12 o'clock. You want to tune in and, and catch us. But look, write us. You know, give to the ministry, ShabakRadio1.com. Amen. Have I missed anything, baby? Anything I need to say? Well, I think you covered just about everything. Did I cover it? <laughs> yes, you did. My baby said I covered everything. Y'all don't mind me saying my baby. I don't care whether you, uh, whether you care or not. I'm well, praise the Lord to our apostle, Mike Freeman. Apostle Mike Freeman, <laughs> happy anniversary. I didn't know it was your anniversary. I just saw that it's your anniversary. Was it? How many years? 22 years? 32 years? I don't know. We love you anyway. Give Dr. Didi Freeman our love. Amen. Amen. Hopefully we get to see you next, next week. And we'll be in New York. We're going to New Jersey. We love to come down to Brandywine and uh, love to see you. Got a lot to talk about. Amen. God is so good. Thank you, Apostle, for tuning in. And then on last Saturday, Minister Louis Farrakhan tuned in. Mm -hmm. And um, and he made a comment about the word, the offspring of God. I am the offspring of God. Minister Louis Farrakhan, watching me? I was so excited, I got fired up. Amen. Amen. Apostle Freeman said it's 35 years. 35 years. Amen. 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 That's three and five. That's eight. It's a new beginning. You're going to start all over again. <laughs> Amen. You ain't, you ain't seen nothing yet. If you think the first 35 years or something, wait till the second 35 years come. Amen. We love you. Hope we see you uh, on April 14, 15, something like that in Brandywine. We're coming to New York, New Jersey, and prayerfully we'll get to Brandywine. Somebody talked about me going in the studio between coming there and doing some recording for them. But we'll see. We love you. We thank you. We're taking back the glory. Shekinah glory. Amen and amen. We're taking back the glory. It's ours anyway. And we're going to walk in the glory. I am Apostle Jeremiah Cummings with my wife, Dr. Glory Maria Cummings, Yahweh, Abiyah, Yahaha, Baraka. We love you. We love you. We love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Amen.